Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, All About Alex. And today, I have some special guests. Guests that I actually gave birth to. This is my second oldest son, Deshan, and we call him the artist. And then this is my third son, Anthony Jr. And he's the smart one. So, I just wanted to introduce you, to, you guys to them and just kind of get some insight on what they like to do because I feel like having them really changed a lot of the things that I'm interested in and think, and they just keep me curious about things that I would never be curious about if I didn't have them in my life. So just because I love them and I think they're very interesting, I wanted to share them with you guys. So today we're just going to be talking about some things that they are very passionate about and I want to try to make this a series. So maybe once a month or so, I'll be bringing them back just to talk about different topics and things that I just find so interesting and that they're so well versed in. We'll start with Deshan. We call him our artist because literally from the time he was able to hold a pencil or a crayon, he has been drawing. And I always told him that that was his God given gift and that one day he would figure out what that gift is for. And he is just so talented and so creative. And so I'll let him tell you a little bit about that. All right, well. Shan. And uh, like you said, I've been drawing as long as I can remember. It's something that I've always been drawn to. I think what it what got me into it mostly is just I really like animation and I really like comic books. So I've always wanted to be able to, you know, make my own animation in comic books. So mm -hmm. getting good at drawing that stuff. Uh, first uh, real attempt to draw something that I can remember was uh, Spider Man because I used to have a How to Draw Spider Man book. And so I was figuring out how to draw Spider-Man. He probably wasn't the best person to start with because he doesn't have a face. <laughs> so it was really hard to figure out how to do that move forward. But I got it eventually, you know. So drawing is probably the thing I like the most out of everything that I like. And I would like to use it to draw in cartoons and comic books at some point. So that's his future goals. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Anthony? What made you like get into really reading a lot of comic books or just even picking up a comic book the first time? So for a comic book, I think the earliest thing I remember is uh, they had the action figures. Yeah. And you know, when we were kids, we were watching the Spider-Man movies and the X-Men movies. I mean, there's a lot of kids who grew up on those kind of yeah. things. But then you'd go to like the store and buy uh, one of the action figures. Um, and then a lot of times they'd come with like a little comic book. Mm -hmm. I'm always just like a, a random story you only got one issue of, so they didn't really have any context or anything. Yeah. But I used to always like getting those and reading through them. You know, I really like to read just yes. in general. So I was just gonna say, Anthony was our kid that loved to read and loved going to the library. Anything books and reading, he just loved it. So. I just kind of figured that that would be the reason why he would pick up a comic book. Anything that was written down that he could read, he, he gravitated towards. Mm -hmm. I was going to mention the first comic book we got was, was the ultimate comic book. The first one we bought? Yeah. Well, that's the first one we bought with our own money because we watched those uh, the ultimate animated movie and they had the documentary on there. At least for it, because whatever, we used to watch all the special features and the DVDs. And that's what made me see that they were a little bit different than any other kid because as far as this goes just because when we would get them like the movies that you know, any other kid would have animated movies and um superhero movies and things like that they would literally watch the director's cut they would watch the credits they they were just very interested in everything about the movie not just the movie itself and so that's when I was like, hmm, you know, they're, this is something that they're very interested in. So I should learn about it because I want to be able to have the skills to talk to them about these different things and just have something else that we can connect with. So what is it like um, having a mom who is interested in these things like you guys are? Oh, well, I mean, it's kind of funny. I like seeing like movies and stuff with you because it's good to have like a person to explain stuff to. I think a lot of times, most people, you know, they don't they actually want to hear it, but because you could talk too long about it or something, or you don't really understand what's going on. So it's just good to, because I, I think sometimes I forget like how weird it is, because it seems like normal to me. Yeah. Until you really try to explain it to somebody else and you realize how much uh, context and it's, it's lower and stuff there is in it, yeah. and you just kind of, it's like, oh, that's just second nature. Yeah. 
like when I talk to Anthony about stuff, we mostly skip over the the smaller details. Yeah, the rudimentary things. Yeah, and just go to the straight to the point because we already understand all that yeah. stuff. That's what it's good because it kind of reminds you like how much time you put into it. Do you guys give it away with all my questions? No, not really. <laughs> I don't know. What about you? Because Anthony's the person, like when we go to the movies, I always say I want to sit by Anthony because I ask him 15,000 questions and he's so patient with me and he don't be like, Mom, be quiet. <laughs> and so I love sitting by him, but does it get annoying sometimes? A little bit. But, <laughs> but I, I mean, I like discussing things. You know, comic book movies are very different from the comic books. So a lot of times it just comes down to like theories and stuff, but I'm also a big fan of just talking about like what I think is happening, mm -hmm. even if I don't know. And I think you also yes. are a theory person, even if you like don't, don't understand know. the lore. <laughs> <laughs> even if you don't understand the lore completely, you have your theories about what's happening. Yeah. And I, you've seen a lot of movies and stuff, especially with us. So I think you, a lot of your theories aren't really too Far out on. there. But <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's just interesting to see. Because maybe just trying to like, our theories are like, okay, is this thing happened in the comic book? And have How would they adapt that into the movies? Because yeah. yeah. you know, the movies in general, they're just trying to make things more, you know, Deshaun was saying everything's crazy in the comic book. Everybody dying, killing black black all yes. the time. In the movies, they try to make it yeah, make more, more sense. <laughs> And one thing I noticed about you guys is when I am talking to you guys about theories, your theories are coming from com all, like years of reading comic books. So you guys know the stories and, mm -hmm. you know, the things that haven't been shown in movies where that's all that I have. Yeah. And so my theories are a little yeah, um, it... elementary compared to you guys. I mean, they literally are geniuses, I feel, when it comes to this kind of stuff so I, it just fascinates me because i never read a comic book before in my life and before they started getting into this it wouldn't have been something that i was very interested in and just seeing it through their eyes as kids was was very exciting and just i loved it but then as they got older and being able to discuss it more on an intellectual level it's just been i just love it so much Deshan, we say you're more of a DC person and Anthony is the Marvel person. And a lot of times I'll ask her, like, we'll see a movie and I'll, it'll be a Marvel movie. And I'll go to Deshan because me and Deshan talk a lot. And he'll be like, I don't know, ask Anthony. He's the one that knows all about the Marvel oh, comic yeah. books. And I'm Especially like, oh, yeah. Like the space stuff. I don't really know anything <laughs> about. I didn't even know who the Guardians of the Galaxy really were until Anthony. <laughs> Anthony's like, you don't know who the Guardians of the Galaxy are? What is wrong with you? He's like, well, you know. <laughs> I knew like one person from the Guardians of the Galaxy before the movie came out. Okay, so we'll go with you first. Okay. What makes you like a Marvel person and like you lean more towards Marvel than DC? Uh, and I'm sorry, first explain what's the difference. Because uh, I mean, I wouldn't even know when we first uh, started what the difference was. Okay, I mean, I guess and for me, the reason why I like Marvel is also kind of a difference. Because, uh, so Marvel... You know, Marvel has Spider-Man, the Avengers, the X-Men, the Fantastic Four. I feel like there's just a lot of different characters and stuff going on in Marvel. DC is pretty much like the Justice League and all their tied characters for the most part. And then Batman. Yeah, well, you know, Batman's on the Justice League. You know, Justice League, like people like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, all the Flash and stuff. Aquaman. Aquaman. Yes. And all of the characters tied to them, like Robin and stuff. Mm -hmm. Or Supergirl. That's mm -hmm. like DC. DC is very like contained around yeah. that. Marvel has a lot of it's a different different pocket. places you can go. Yes. You know, when I was a kid, I was really into the X Men. Like the X Men was my favorite superhero team. Um, you know, now I like the Avengers a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, but you know, there's a lot of different things that you can like. I feel like in Marvel. And That's there's true. so different routes that they can mm -hmm. take. Like they have. The superheroes that are on earth and then they have yeah, all these they, different yeah, universes and yeah. yeah stuff like that in space um and you're more into that in general because you like star wars and and stuff mm -hmm. like that too so yeah that will be something that kind of would be more towards your leniency yeah. than and I feel like Marvel also just makes more sense, you know. They all, they all have this comic book science to it. That's actually and true. You got, I'll be honest. <laughs> you got like Spider-Man. You actually agree with that. <laughs> Marvel makes more sense. <laughs> you got Spider-Man gets put by every guy because Spider-Man got spider powers. You know, that doesn't make any sense. But it makes more sense than like yeah. Superman who has 
just all these different powers just because he's under this new sun. Like, I don't know how that gives you the ability <laughs> to fly or something. And what makes you more of a DC person? I think I just, well, Anthony's right. Like, I think Marvel's a little more streamlined than DC, than DC in, in, like, the lore and stuff. Like, Marvel pulls in more of reality yeah. into yeah. their... And Marvel has more, I think the reason it makes more sense is because most of them were done by the same people. You know, okay. it's like mostly Stan Lee mm -hmm. and a couple of artists mm -hmm. created pretty much everybody. All the characters that we DC know. DC is a little different. It's mostly just a bunch of different comics from the 40s that were bought by the company oh, and then okay. combined later. They're like, okay. well, these guys all are in the same universe now. So uh, they were literally created. All the DC, I mean, this is something I didn't even yeah. know. So like the DC characters were all kind of created by different artists. Yeah. And then DC came along and just kind of bought all these different characters yeah. and then put them all like, into one. It's like two businessmen just wanted okay. to get into comics, so they just bought people that already had audiences. Oh, okay. I didn't uh, know that. It's, uh, but the thing I like the most about DC, I think, is the lore is very, it's complicated and weird, but it's also really extensive. It makes sense to me, but I think it's just because I've been in it so long. Yeah. Well, what I like the most about DC, I think, uh, it is it is more unit like I mean, Marvel has more pockets of different kinds of worlds. DC is more centered on the Justice League. Yeah, but I think you know, Earth. Yeah, <laughs> I like I just like the there's except like for a, maybe Aquaman, right? Yeah. He's yeah, not, well, well, he's on the he's on the Justice League too. I know, but as far as being from Earth, oh yeah, like I mean, he's from he's from Atlantis. Yes, uh, there's so a Green Lantern as yeah. well. He's kind of space based. But there's oh, like yeah, a yeah, that's right. There's like a really long history of DC and there's like a theme of like legacy and the lore goes back like like in Marvel, you know, like as time moves forward, the characters move forward. Mm -hmm. Like even Spider-Man was created in, in the 60s and there's some of this in DC too. Spider-Man was created in the 60s, right? So when he was first appeared, he was in the 60s. But now, you know, modern interpretations, they say, well, he, he was bitten by the spider sometime in the 2000s. Yeah. But, you know, for DC... So they kind of adapt to yeah. the changing times. Yeah. Whereas DC, DC keeps their characters... Yeah, like the, like the central people will move up as time goes, like Batman. But, like, you know, like Wonder Woman, depending on the version, she still fought in World War II. Yeah. There's, like, legacy heroes, like uh, Green Lantern. There's been there's been Green Lantern since the 40s. Mm -hmm. The Flashes, there's multiple Flashes. And there's, like, it's just, like, a, I, I like the... There's a lot of deep history in DC, like even in the comic books itself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for Marvel, it's more like, you know, things mostly got started at the same time. Yeah. Was, the Captain America was in the past, and um, Namor has been along for, around for a long time, but most Wolverine. of the heroes. Yeah, Wolverine. But well, most of there was like a big heroic age that kind of yeah. kicked off in Marvel. Like, there wasn't heroes, like in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, mm -hmm. like Iron Man popped up, and then all of a sudden, more yeah, and more people these, yeah. came up right after him. But DC, it isn't really like that in the movies, which I think is a missed opportunity, but in DC, it's like the heroes are just a normal thing. They've always been around. Like, there's a team that even predates the Justice League called the Justice Society, and they fought in World War II, mm. and they actually got disbanded because of the McCarthy era. Oh. And people thought they were traitors, and they because well, they wouldn't communist. reveal their secret identities. So they, there's a lot of, like, historical figures. And, and so stuff this is stuff that is a missed opportunity, because that's stuff that I didn't even know. Yeah. That yeah. they could, they could, um, they could put into their movies, into their, you know, yeah. TV shows and stuff and make it more interesting, you know. And that brings me to, like, the Marvel versus DC kind of thing where, yeah. um, you know, Marvel gets a lot of credit for being masterminds as far as yeah. marketing their characters and um, the movie making business and things like that. And what do you guys think about that? I think that good for me that I have one that likes one and one that likes the other but you guys don't like trash the other one like oh, some yeah. people do well we both like both it's just that we prefer mm -hmm. one over the other mm -hmm. yeah. I think wherever DC goes wrong it's when it tries to be like Marvel because a lot of times the Marvel will be kicking their butt and they're like well the solution is to act more like Marvel and that's never the solution answer because it just yeah. makes things worse yeah this is what they're doing what they did with the movies that's why they were yeah. messing up I think DC's strengths are just different than Marvel's. Mm -hmm. Marvel's more about like relatable characters, and uh, they're more I think about, I would say Marvel's more like pop culture. Yeah, they're more like. And what would you say DC? DC is more like, like leg history. legends, and yeah. it's more like mythology. Yeah. DC always reminded me of like the like Greek heroes, yes. like Hercules. Yeah, and stuff. Like that's what you said, like this, mythology. Yeah, because yeah, that we even stuff. saw that with the new Wonder Woman movie, which <laughs> we will talk about. Um, yeah. But that was stuff that I didn't know that we learned about, you know, and it just kind of made me think about 
the mythology that I learned about just in school in general, it kind of connects with that. Yeah, I, I've heard of kind of like DC's like a bunch of like, you know, basically gods who are trying to like fit in with men and then Marvel's like a bunch of men who are like elevated to being gods. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, That's a good way you to got, put it. You know, it doesn't always work. You got bad. Definitely got one exception Thor. on each yeah. team. Thor is the yeah. yeah. Thor is like actually. I mean, yeah, Marvel when it when they first got started doing like things like uh, the Fantastic Four or especially Spider Man, like. Spider-Man, one of the things that made him so popular is how relatable he was. Mm -hmm. He had a lot yeah. of problems. He, was a kid. he probably had too many pro more problems than anybody really has. But yeah. you know, <laughs> the, the amount of problems people are, like read in the comic books, it's almost kind of a soap opera kind yeah. of thing. Where yeah. He's you know rooting for him as a person as Peter Parker, yeah. almost as much as Spider-Man. Yeah. Um, which is something that is basically spread to all superheroes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's yeah. that was like the key for Marvel's success. Well, I think DC's success is almost the opposite, where it's just like you know, more like inspiration. Yeah, needed, which I think is probably a product of when they were created. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of them were created during the Great Depression, so mm -hmm. most of them were like, oh, there's somebody that you can rely on to help you. Yeah, like Superman when he first showed up, his first issue, all uh, he fought like corrupt Wall Street people. He fought like a, a guy that was abusing his wife and like an evil mayor. That was one of the just people because he of the time that yeah. he showed up in. They just kind of were supposed to inspire people. <clears throat> I guess. And Marvel was in the 60s and that was like the young era yeah. after the nuclear age. So it was more like, we want people that are more like us. Yeah, and I think that um, like Anthony said, like a lot of times now superheroes are taken more towards that Marvel model yeah. of making them more relatable and like bringing them down some because i know yeah. when i was a kid um and i could be mistaken but i loved wonder woman the tv show mm -hmm. but she was almost perfect yeah like she never did anything bad or she never you know and so of course you know you wanted her when you were in trouble but you never thought you could be her yeah. whereas nowadays characters or superheroes i feel like they make you feel like you could be yeah. them because they're normal people yeah. just trying to do something great even with um iron man when he has the little boy yeah. and he kind of encourages the little boy to um you know keep you know learning and keep growing and um because he's really good at tech like like um iron man is what's his real name though no, tony, tony, stark. tony stark yeah and so i think stuff like that it kind of tells little kids that yeah we have these abilities but we're human beings like everybody else so you yeah. you know you can kind of strive to do thing, what we do another thing marvel tends to do is they tend to show the drawbacks of being super powered mm -hmm. like uh you know iron man had the thing and it's just for a yeah. while it's, it's wolverine you know he's been alive for a long mm -hmm. time he's kind of miserable yeah and hulk has that whole yeah it's it's like, yeah. Eye kind of thing it's like well you know like one of the things I remember Even Stanley iron man saying, it made him have a lot of anxiety yeah like just being a superhero doesn't make your life great, you know, like sometimes yeah. it creates more problems. You know? I mean, yeah, that was kind of the thing in Spider-Man. I was just going to say that. Where with, like, you know, yeah. Mary Jane would, would get mad at him because he didn't show up to, like, the play or whatever. And he's doing Spider-Man stuff, and he's, he's got all yeah. these different yeah. things going on. Like, but then, yeah. when I think, I can't remember what movie it was, but he had kind of taken off, and he wanted to do, he wanted to be somewhere, he wanted to be present but he wasn't there to save whatever whatever and so then you can't win on either side because either you know you're getting trashed in the press because where's spider-man when you need him or you don't have a personal life because you, yeah. you're always out there trying to uh but i think dc they i feel like with dc it doesn't always work you know they had like the man of steel superman yeah. movies which i yeah. i thought it was man of steel was all right but i think me and dc yeah. both agree that like yeah. Superman well, you, uh, can't be. It doesn't really work if he's completely just a regular person. Yeah, yeah. I, feel like, know, I, I think that's what Wonder Woman did. I yeah. feel like it goes against his his like because he is not a human. I never understood when they try to make him fight against or like I want to just be a regular person. I don't want to be a superhero because that's kind of like baked in him. Supposedly, he can't be selfish. 
Yeah. And so it. whenever they would try to do that in some of the movies, it didn't feel real. Yeah. It didn't feel well, I think authentic, Marvel, I think. With well, Superman in particular, I think if you if you try to make him more like a Marvel hero, it kind of it, it's kind of has scary implications. Like it's just kind of weird because I like uh, it actually the member the Justice League with uh, Hamilton. Um, yeah, he was like afraid of Superman because of that. Because because Superman like he could destroy the planet. So mm -hmm. if he's acting like a regular person, you, right. I feel like he's he's got to be. If any if any of them do, he's got to be a book of problems. Yeah, I feel like that too. Because yeah, I think with like uh, you know back in the day they had the animated series mm -hmm. for Superman and the Justice League, yeah. and they also had like Smallville. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like both of those did a good job of like making a Superman that had like. He, was like he wasn't person. completely perfect, but he still had like the qualities of Superman. Like mm -hmm. you could see like. just from like instantly first time you see him, you know, yeah. like oh, this is a good person I can trust. Yeah. And, well, I think yeah, just making him like like Captain America, where he's like you yes. know he can make mistakes, but you trust but him because he's always, always trying to do, yeah, the, right to do the right thing. Yeah. yeah, he isn't like being selfish and and like doing. Like, like Iron Man, where sometimes he'll do yeah. something that has bad implications. Yeah, and that's where I think uh, DC the movies have done Wonder Woman pretty well. Yeah, I feel like in her movies, she is. I mean, she's not perfect. She's not as perfect as she was in like yeah, in the past. When I was a kid. But yeah. then you have that scene in Wonder Woman one that everybody remembers where yeah, she, she the, charges the, into battle. Yeah, goes yeah. into that World War One scene is like yeah. inspires all those troops and stuff. Yeah, yeah. she's like because they were just gonna leave them there yeah. to, to, to you know. She's yeah, definitely the, she's definitely more of a hero than a regular person, yeah. Yeah. and it's not just the power she has, but also like yeah. who she is. Who she that's is. Yeah. Yeah, that's what DC is about. I think it's mm -hmm. like they're just kind of just show you what you can be capable of. For braver, it's like like Batman's whole. Mm -hmm. You remember like he's he's sick of his cities being basically controlled by mobsters and yeah. criminals, and everybody's too afraid to challenge him. And the whole point is like Batman's trying to show people, it's like, well, you know, you can defend your own city, you know, stand up. Right. And so he, you know, he inspires, he, he inspires Commissioner Gordon, he inspires Harvey Dent, mm -hmm. you know, because he's he's willing to stand up to, and he's just a normal guy. So I think DC's like their 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 whole point is like to inspire people, like Wonder Woman inspires people and Superman inspires people. And that's why they're creative, I think. Yeah. yeah. So with you, with being an artist, like what do you take from um, just Marvel and DC in general? Like how does that impact your artistry? When I was learning how to draw superheroes, there's a lot of different things that Marvel and DC do differently, but, but they do great. Marvel is, uh, well, you know, you got a lot of artists to take from Jack Kirby. One of the things I'm jealous of is Jack Kirby can, Jack Kirby can like make up a weapon or a spaceship or something out of his head and it and looks who's crazy. Jack, who's Jack Kirby? All right, well, Stanley and Jack Kirby together created most of the Marvel heroes. There's a couple other artists in there that Stanley worked with, but Jack Kirby's the big one. Mm -hmm. and they're pretty they're much they're all they're the they're Avengers, they're pretty much. Uh, the X-Men, Fantastic Four, Daredevil. You know, he's and like Jack the, Kirby like literally created these characters, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, he's, like yeah. the, he's the one who did the arts and designs and yeah. stuff. And then Stanley, Stanley did the, the, story. the yeah. stories. Yeah. Yeah. The way the characters look, that with Jack Kirby's the one that came up with mm. all that. Like Captain America's look has been the same since he was created because it, you know, it was too iconic to change. And I think the thing that Jack Kirby did, I think the reason people say it sticks with people, his artwork, is because one, he can create a fictional thing and you believe that it works weirdly enough. Like his, and his designs for his alien technology and his weapons and stuff were just crazy looking, but it still looks like it works, which is weird. And, uh, and his costumes are always really striking, and you just remember it like the Hulk. You know the Hulk immediately mm -hmm. when you see him, even like no matter what form he's in, you could yeah. you could see like a Lego version of the Hulk, and you'd still know it was the yeah. Hulk. And uh, like Captain America, like if a little kid drew Captain America with like like a six year old, you'd still be able to tell it was him because there's certain things yeah. about him that everybody recognizes. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of, kind of the, yeah, well, that's the key <laughs> yeah. to a, a iconic character. I think is uh, if a little kid can draw it, people still can tell who it is. Mm -hmm. And at DC is sort of like that. I think DC, where they stick out is their heroes. Uh, they kind of wear their symbolism on them. Mm -hmm. Like you can tell what they're all about just yeah. by looking at them. Like Batman, everybody can tell what they're doing. It's got the, the, the cape that he uses to fly. It's, the, it's got the sharp edges on it. Yeah. It's got the bad ears. Wonder Woman has like the golden it's armor. It's like dark and mysterious, I yeah. think, of Batman. She's got her bracelets and her yeah. lasso glows when she uses it. And there's a lot of like, 
and stuff that gets you excited. Mm -hmm. When you see a DC superhero, they have their heavy themes on them. Yeah, yeah. So you get a feeling when you see them. Yeah. Like Superman, you Superman, feel a certain yeah. way when you see Superman. Yeah. You feel a certain way when you see Batman. You feel a certain way when you see Wonder Woman. Uh, like Aquaman, you kind of he's got the scales on his mm -hmm. costume. He's got his trident. It's kind of you just get a sense of what they're all about. The flash has the lightning bolt, yeah. and he's like red, which is like he's got the things on his head that point backwards, yeah. kind of like he's, the wind. Yeah, he, he actually the guy that designed that costume, he won like several awards for when he created it. Oh wow! Because it was just like people were like, "This is the best superhero costume ever created." The Flash. The, the Flash is one of my favorite superheroes, but the, the previous of Flash's costume design yeah. was pretty bad. Jay Garrick's <laughs> <laughs> with, with the metal uh, thing on his head. It was basically just like a, a shirt, a t-shirt, and like jeans, and then he's got like a helmet on that um, looks like a, a bowl, <laughs> <laughs> a bowl, a metal bowl with like wings on it. Uh, wow. So, yeah. It was not good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy looking. And then they made it more streamlined and like he's, he looks like he's got speed. And, mm -hmm. and it helps when he's moving in the comic books too, so you can tell what he's doing. Yeah. So Because a lot of times you, it, conveying movement is really hard to do in a comic mm -hmm. book. Especially like making it look like somebody's moving really fast. I think his costume lends itself really well to that more than uh most people so if you like loving to read and you actually got your degree in english and film oh okay and i could take some pictures of that and put it up but um if you you got your like i said you got your degree in english and film like mm -hmm. what do you think or do you think that the, the comic books and all that had any impact on that just like the superhero world uh, I mean, I think it it definitely um, got me more interested in reading. I remember like there was like a point where I was like pretty young, kind of probably like first or second grade. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was having some speech problems, yes. and I started reading some more to like help out with mm -hmm. that. Um, and like I was reading uh, comic books, and then uh, that led to like you know books that were similar. Yeah. And, you know, just all of that, it kind of expanded. And even even now, uh, you know, it's one of the reasons why I like, I like reading any story that really has like a, a strong hero in it. Yeah. Um, I like going back to like the history of what, what inspired like Superman, or, like mm -hmm. people like little Hercules and stuff. So I'll read yeah. like those kind of things. Or like Beowulf is uh, a crazy, a crazy old English story. Yeah. But you know, you could even read it that, you're like, I could see how you know, this goes to like make, you know you could five or ten iterations and then eventually you get yeah. the superhero yeah. yeah and kind of like you know how you like to read like even just like the the harry potters and the um lord of the rings and things like that because it's got that strong yeah. good versus evil type of thing mm -hmm. um, and, yeah i feel like those tie especially to like uh the dc heroes how the dc heroes work and they're I mean, you guys were saying that they were very, like, legends-based. Yeah. And I, I feel like even things like Harry Potter, which is, you know, much more recent than, like, Superman. Mm -hmm. But it still feels like, like, Harry Potter and Superman, they even have, like, a lot of interesting similarities. Yeah. The big good versus evil vibe yeah. to them, too. Yeah. And then just not having parents and mm -hmm. things like that, yeah. You know, Marvel's a little different. I don't know, it's almost like its own world. It doesn't really work as well as in a book form. Yeah. For some reason, in book form, I typically struggle more with a protagonist that has a bunch of problems that yeah. I don't feel like they're actively dealing with. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, dude, you need therapy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, you need to stop being a superhero and get your life together. Yeah, it's like, you know, I'll, and you know, there's a lot of books like that, and you know, it's not always too much of a problem, but I guess just being in their head, if I'm there you know, the whole time, it's like, well you should just do this yeah. and your life will get better. Yeah. But I think with like books, when you're reading something, you know, I, I really liked Harry Potter when I was a kid. Um, and part of that is that as a character, he's a little bit more like imprintable on, like he's open for you yeah. to step in, which I think is something that like, not in the same way that like a Marvel character is relatable, but like he's a- I got, I got everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm saying like they're like a he's like a fantasy of like a can you imagine how what it would be like to be to this? Be him. 
and uh, that's something that like, I feel like how Superman is, or even Batman. I mean, Batman's life is not pretty bad, but like, nowadays, and especially a lot of like cartoons and stuff, they play it up as like, look at all these cool gadgets he had, mm -hmm. look at him taking down all these villains, yeah. and like, you know, they play up like his uh, Robins and class. Alfreds and stuff, yeah. and all the like support system that he has yeah. now, which I think DC really plays up the. This, these are characters you want to step in and I think that's something that I like in like books and stuff. And I was just going to say that's the mark of a good book, right? Is it when you can get inside that person mm -hmm. and you can see their life. You're like, you're like living their experiences through them. Whereas if you can't do that on a book, then it's probably not going to be that much of an interesting read. It's just, I mean, there's you're some like books, an outsider looking in. I mean, I guess some, some books that are written like that. that. There's some books that are like I've read some books where it's like, this book is written so that you won't like the protagonist because the protagonist is a bad person too. And it, I mean, those books, they can't be good, but it's like, it's it's a harder, it's harder thing to write. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you can do that well, that means you're like a, a, a great, a great writer. writer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, typically it's the, you know, you have a good story when like the people are like thinking about it even years later, like yeah. people are still thinking about Hogwarts and yeah, you know they got theme parks and stuff. Yeah. And like, um, so what kind of writer do you want to be? Uh, well, that's a hard question. I mean, I, I'm really interested in fantasy. I mean, we talk about Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter, mm -hmm. so I'd really like to like come up with uh, something that is that like deep and um, expansive. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I don't know if it necessarily would be a fantasy story or maybe like a sci-fi story. I'm a big... You probably could have did better at Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> the way it ended. Yeah. I mean, there... And that's no knock to the actual writer, but that that was um, because of the, oh, yeah, the writers of the show, not the writers of the writer of the book. Yeah. I mean, people say that they were hired to adapt the story. Right. And so they when they ran out of stuff to adapt, it's like... Well, okay, they don't really know, actually do you know, it. they don't really have the mind of the actual author, so they don't yeah. really know where the story is That's actually go. going. Yeah. So they're, you know, it feels different, but yeah, I, you know, I like Star Wars, which isn't yes. really, it's, it's sci-fi, it has a lot of like fantasy s things, mm -hmm. you know, it's not sci-fi in the same way that like Star Trek is, where, you know, Star Trek kind of, they, they try to work in a way where m most things are explained mm -hmm. scientifically. Star Wars, they don't really explain yeah, much. It's, it's just, just like, uh, you know, it, it's just magic, but it's in yeah. space. Uh, and But I, I really like, you know, that those kind of worlds and mm -hmm. stuff. So that's what I would want to create as an author. And like, how do you think that would tie in um, um, with the animation and things like that? Like, would that be something you'd be interested in? Like, if you wrote books like that, would that be something that you would be wanting to happen um in the future like to tie the two worlds together mm -hmm. yeah i mean um i mean just speaking of like both like the story aspect and then also animation i think what me and Chan, one of our favorite shows is uh, avatar the last airbender i mean we saw the movie which was not, not great but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, a lot of stuff from the first season <laughs> but like the the cartoon in general uh, I mean, for me, I, I always am amazed at how they were able to, like, you, they're, they're definitely constrained by the age group that it's mm -hmm. for. Like, they're ta telling the story about a war, but then the story is for, like, kids. So kids. they have to make it so, lighter. Yeah, but then they do it in such a way where it's like, you still feel like there's stakes, you still feel like the characters are going through a lot of stuff, yeah. they still have a lot of weight on their shoulders, and, like, all the characters are kids, so that both helps and hurts where like you can the kids will bring their own levity mm -hmm. to the situation yeah. but then also sometimes it's like is this being too childish but that show balances everything so well that like, i mean i know a lot of like adults or like um older teenagers and stuff who have gone to watch the show years after the fact and people have liked it mm -hmm. um and so that that's one of the inspirations for me when you know, as a as a person who both has like a film and a writing degree, I'm always like, I I really have like an idea for maybe writing a series or something, mm -hmm. and that's one of the big inspiration for me when thinking about series and stuff mm -hmm. is like this, which 
is probably one of the best like fantasies of the last like 20 year uh but also for tv shows yeah you know i mean you mentioned game of thrones but most tv shows cannot pull off a satisfying satisfying whole series yeah so very few can and then it's a it's a short series but it's like it all flows so well and like the ending is satisfying yeah and everything wraps up well and i, I think that's one of the only series where I, like pretty much everybody enjoys the ending i think one of the last episodes is one of the highest rated ones wow. so yeah and what about you because like, you also like to create stories and yeah. you've created a lot of original characters um so how do you like draw from just your inspirations and creating um, characters that never been seen before, storylines that just come out of your own head and stuff like that? Well, uh, a lot of my inspirations are a lot similar to Anthony's, I think. I think uh, one of the things is weird about me and Anthony is we, we like a lot of the same stuff, but we tend to draw different things mm -hmm. from it. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, one of my things, I think it's a problem and a, and a thing that's a strength. It's, it's usually less about the world building and more about like an interesting character and i like i like weird stuff like mm -hmm. like if it's like kind of surreal i guess is is the thing like i'm drawn to stuff like the guardians of the galaxy and like the weirder stuff in dc like uh that's why i like the aquaman comic so much it yeah. takes place underwater and it almost feels like another planet yeah because uh there's a lot of stuff underwater the aquaman is just kind of down there all the time and uh, that's one of the things that i'm drawn to like weird creatures and like just like a hero traveling around and going up against a bunch of weird stuff doesn't necessarily even have to have like a strong plot if i'm being honest <laughs> uh, I, I think that helps it's always good because yeah. it helps narrative thrust i think that's where me and anthony meet in the middle especially if we try to make something together because uh, like, uh when i'm creating ideas I'm a lot of, like i want it to look visually really good because i'm a drawer as opposed to a writer. So even though I like stories, I think my brain, just because I draw a lot, is like, well, I'm focused a lot more on how cool something Visual. looks. So you're the Jack Kirby yeah. and you're the Stan Lee. Yeah. So I'm giving birth to both of them. <laughs> yeah, like Jack Kirby, that was, he's a big inspiration. Yeah. And that was always his big strength. And you can tell, because when he went to, he went to DC and he created something called the New Gods. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, after him and Stan had their falling out and, uh, the new guys is like, one of them was in the Justice League movie, the main villain. Oh, in the okay. He's one of the new oh, guys. Yeah. It doesn't really look like he does in the yeah, comic. His book. design is, I mean, his design is pretty plain in the movie, I think. But they yeah. were, they've drawn, gone far from, you know, if you look at like this cover, which has like just a ton of colors mm -hmm. and stuff, and like that's how yeah. Jack Kirby is. It's like everything pops. Right. Yeah. Get your yeah. attention. Mm -hmm. And uh, the new guys, you know, everybody likes them, but they're definitely missing. Stan elements, I think. Oh, yeah. So you like, needed both of them yeah, together to like, make magic. Like the best character is probably Mr. Miracle and Big Barda, and even they're not, oh, they don't, they're not anything compared to like the Fantastic Four. Yeah. Which are great. They're strong characters. You remember all of them very easily. Their costumes are, are simple, but they, you remember them. They go on epic adventures. They get Galactus, and Doctor Doom. Yeah. Uh, the new guys are very complicated, I think. And they're mostly just like these crazy looking aliens that are at war all the time and their costumes look insane yeah. and they're not very good they i don't most of them i don't even think would translate very well to the movie because they, yeah. they don't really follow the laws of physics yeah i feel like the new gods they don't really have like a narrative like a lot of marvel characters yeah. do they it's, they're kind of like a setting like yeah it's, it's like almost like if you want to tell a story, there's these two factions that are fighting all the time and they're, yeah. all, they're all interesting, but like they, they don't really have anything to go like the past big, that. The big one's Darkseid, because I think he's, he's, he's like one of the biggest villains in DC. Uh, he's, he's actually uh, related to Steppenwolf. Okay. So, uh, he's in charge of the planet Steppenwolf from. But uh, yeah, Darkseid's kind of like, he's like the Thanos of the DC universe mm -hmm. in a way. And he's a... Uh, and I think he's probably the most fleshed out new god because mm -hmm. he's been used the most by other writers and stuff. That's the kind of idea that I like. Like Darkseid is mm -hmm. basically just like if he's like pure evil. Like he's there's he is like a complicated character at all. Yeah. He's just he's just he's evil. Bad. Yeah. He's like a big bad gray and black guy with glowing red eyes and yeah. he's just like he owns a planet that uh 
it's just like on fire all the time. Wow. <laughs> and there's not like demons all over the place. <laughs> okay. It's, I don't know. It's just like a. I like that. It's, it's kind of like Lord of the Rings. You just take everything up to the top mm -hmm. level. Jack Kirby, he's really good at creating all these crazy ideas. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but Stanley is always the one that made it feel like a central idea. Yeah, and he brought it like together, everything yeah, together. That's like a great storyline. And that's especially true in the Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. You needed both of them. Because yeah. I think, especially the Galactus storyline, when Galactus shows up to eat the planet, like Silver Surfer was pretty much 100% Stan's idea, or Jack's idea. And Stan loved it, and they ran with it together. Mm -hmm. And like the way Galactus looks, he's like one of the most iconic looking supervillains of all time. And there's a larger than life aspect to it that only Jack can really do. Yeah. But Stan is the one that keeps it grounded. Yeah. You know, he's got the Fantastic Four, he's got a solid storyline yeah. where, you know, there's a there's an arc and yeah, he adds like the dialogue and the characterization. And I think he just keeps Jack from floating yeah, in off into crazy yeah. land. Which is what Anthony tends to do for me. Yeah. So yeah. I think uh I thought it was probably good such a bad rap because of their movies that would have been stellar. Yeah. Like their comic books were kind of one of the things that made Marvel popular like that when they when that team came out that was like the first big Marvel comic and that really put Marvel on the map yeah. uh, and like early, a lot of their early storylines they were pretty well received for most of their run up until like the I mean even now I don't think they really have too many runs that people don't like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, their, their movies have just not been on par with Well, them. I would say the Fantastic Four, the, the first couple movies were... Yeah, I think the first couple movies, they're probably yeah. a little too, like... I mean, I guess the second one's kind of kind of randomly crazy. But the first one yeah. especially is really grounded, where, like, they tried to... Yeah. You know, even but, by... I'm oh, sorry. Even by Fantastic Four standards, yeah, the second well, one's still pretty grounded. <laughs> you know, the Fantastic Four, they're kind of these characters who are like, you know, it's kind of like uh, Doctor Strange where there's all that like jump into other dimensions and stuff. Yeah. But like they're doing that with science. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, or even like Ant Man where they're shrinking, they're just going on all these adventures. Mm -hmm. You know, they're fighting dinosaurs and they're going and trying to stop stars from exploding or something. And it's all these crazy things. Um, you know, they aren't really as much superheroes, they're more like, Scientists, scientists and explorers yeah. very much like a you know kind of exploring like the uh new frontiers and mm -hmm. stuff so like star uh, star trek yeah it's, it's yeah. similar to star trek similar to like i always got that like the feeling of like people going to like the new world mm -hmm. from like, it, like yeah. back in the day and just finding all this crazy stuff and writing about it yeah uh, that's yeah. kind of what i always thought about that's a good school. way to think about it yeah okay so this was the first episode of our new series um, where I bring you guys my most precious gifts, my sons, because I feel like they are so interesting and they have so much to share and they're going to be coming out actually with their own podcast. So uh, when that's up and running, I will definitely be linking that to my channel um, just so you guys can enjoy it. Um, I think you will enjoy it because they are just awesome at explaining things to people like me who wouldn't have necessarily know these things or be interested in them um so again this is anthony jr and this is Deshan, and i'm gonna be bringing them to you hopefully at least once a month so we'll get into like different uh, specific comic books and what they think about different movies and different books and things like that and so i hope you guys like this episode i hope you um, give it a thumbs up and also hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed yet and then turn on your notification button so you can um, be notified whenever there's a new video up. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate, appreciate you guys and the All About Alex family. I hope you have a blessed day. Bye!